missiles. Well, not since 1975 has a Boston police officer been killed in the line of duty. Today in West Roxbury, Officer Roy Sergi, who died this week as he was recovering from gunshot wounds, was honored by his friends and colleagues. WMJX's Steve Brown was there. Detail! Present! Who? Nearly every police force in Massachusetts was represented. Hundreds of cruisers with their lights flashing proceeded down Center Street, stopping in front of the Holy Name Parish in West Roxbury. Father Arthur Driscoll delivered the homily and had a message for Detective Sergi's fellow officers. Do not forget Roy Sergi. Honor him and his badge by the integrity with which you do your work for the kingdom. And hold steadfast and be courageous for the sake of our people and the city of our God. Following the mass, Detective Roy Sergi was laid to rest at St. Joseph Cemetery in West Roxbury. Police are still looking for his killer. Steve Brown, WMJX well, News. 60 degrees in Boston, Harvey Leonard's forecast later in the 11 o'clock news. The bodies of an unidentified man and woman and their 10-month-old son were found in Boston's Mattapan section this morning. WMJX's Steve Brown has this live report. That's right, Pete. The three bodies were found shortly after 9 o'clock this morning in the upstairs bedroom here at 64 Tennis Street. The medical examiner is currently in the house making a preliminary investigation of the deaths. Police spokesman Detective John Gillespie says the bodies were found by two Suffolk County constables who were serving an eviction notice to the occupants. The scene is being examined right now. At this particular point, there's no outwardly visible signs of injuries such as gunshot wounds, knife wounds of that nature. But the medical examiner is now examining the scene and the bodies. Gillespie says the preliminary investigation indicates the three have been dead so for a few days. The fiscal budget for the state tomorrow. WMJX Steve Brown has a preview in this live report from the newsroom. Rod, Governor Dukakis has been releasing bits and pieces of his budget recommendation over the past few weeks, highlighting such issues as daycare and AIDS funding. Tomorrow, however, he presents the legislature the whole thing, and administration officials say it will be the biggest state spending package in regarding how much money will be going to local communities so that cities and towns can begin planning their budgets. With this live report from the newsroom, Steve Brown, WMJX News. President Reagan will be held. WMJX's Steve Brown recently spent several days out in the Hawkeye State. Today he begins a five-part series on why Iowa, the importance of the Iowa caucuses. Uh, if there is too much emphasis placed on Iowa, I don't really think that is the fault of either of the parties here. Uh, that just is somewhat of a creation of the media. The candidates come here, then the media come here, then more candidates come here and more media, and pretty soon uh, Iowa has become a battleground. The media not only report the game, they set the expectations and then interpret those expectations or interpret the outcomes according to the expectations that they have set. The Iowa caucus and those who cover the caucus have been taking some lumps as of late, but why Iowa and why have the 13 presidential candidates spent so much time and money in a state with less than 3 million people? With the media spotlight on the caucuses, Drake University professor Hugh Weinbrenner says the name of the game is to do better than your expectation. If you were expected to come in fifth in Iowa and you came in second, you're probably going to be the big winner. If you were expected to come in first and you came in a poor second, it could be your Waterloo. All the candidates know that a good showing in Iowa means momentum and money for New Hampshire and the races that follow. In my next report, the Iowa State Party chairman talk about the caucus. Steve Brown, WMJX News. And part two of Steve's series, Why Iowa, will be heard tomorrow morning on That's WMJX during today. 7 o'clock. WMJX's Steve Brown has been checking on the roads and public transportation and has this report live from the newsroom. Steve? Lana, the weather is making travel a bit tricky. Corporal Joe Howley of the state police says the highways around the city, and in particular those north and west of Austin, are slippery. We've had numerous accidents, uh, Steve, uh, two minute even list. Uh, from above. As for other means of transportation, minor delays on the red line, the orange line is running longer trains to handle the expected early rush, and bus routes are running a bit slow. Over at Logan Airport, they are not accepting incoming planes, however planes are departing. Of course, you'll want to check with your airline to make sure that your plane will be leaving on time. With this live report from the newsroom, Steve Brown, WMJX News. Thanks, Steve. WMJX, Steve Brown was with Gary Hart when he made his big announcement in New Hampshire today. Let me say hello. I'm Gary Hart. Nice to see you.
Have a nice holiday. After ending his seven-month campaign hiatus, Gary Hart took to the streets of Concord, New Hampshire, to shake hands and to ask for support. He said he has some new ideas that have not been brought forth in the campaign and feels it is time for him to get back into the race. Good debate on serious issues can't help but help the party and strengthen everyone, and that's what this is all about. I'm not going to try to take anyone else's issues or co-opt anyone else's uh, campaigns or anything else. Hart says his new ideas involve strategic investment in the economy, the reform of military institutions, and an enlightened engagement in foreign policy. Steve Brown, WMJX News. Who play a role in Dukakis's decision about the White House, including the opinion of his wife Kitty. Following a breakfast in Osceola, Iowa, Mrs. Dukakis said the final decision is his. I'm not leaning either way. It's, a, it's, it's really his decision to make with input from the family and from so many other people. He's not any closer to making a decision about the presidency than he was before he left. No, I'm just absorbing and learning and listening. Steve Brown, WMJX News, traveling with the governor in Chicago. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts has warned about the problems of effective emergency response in Des Moines, Iowa. The governor is still mum about any presidential plans, even after touring much of rural Iowa. Dukakis is following breakfast. The governor was asked, as he looks back at yesterday, was it the kind of day that made him feel encouraged if he decides to run? It was the kind of day that made me feel good about the United States. Of State Capitol in Olympia, Dukakis met with Washington Governor Booth Gardner. Gardner said Dukakis has a good chance of picking up Hart delegates. I think they're going to take some time to get over the shock. Sacramento, California. Good morning. It's 11.50, and I'm Steve Brown with the latest from the WMJX Newsroom. 58 degrees in Boston, little bits of sun and clouds today. It'll be somewhat warmer and windy. Bill Corbell is in for the vacationing Harvey Leonard. And Bill's three-day forecast is coming up in just a bit. President Reagan is in the Bay State at this hour. He's about to deliver what is called a major speech about his upcoming trip to the Soviet Union. The president will be at the Springfield Civic Center. He has been invited by the Western Massachusetts World Affairs Council. In about a half an hour, there'll be a celebration campaign rally on the steps of the State House. The Dukakis administration is pulling out all the stops as the governor signs the much-touted universal health care bill. The extravaganza will be complete with a jazz band, gospel singers, and thousands of balloons. A big meeting today in Andover as the New York-based Coniston Company tries to gain control of the Gillette Company. Coniston is attempting to oust four Gillette directors, which would give them control of the corporation. A Boston television station is up for sale. Rupert Murdoch's News America Company is putting Channel 25 up for sale. This despite the court ruling which allows Murdoch to hang on to both his TV station and the Boston Herald. Larry Speaks speaks up again. The former presidential press secretary caused a stir last week when he revealed in his book that he would make up quotes from the president from time to time, even though the president was unaware that Speaks was speaking for him. On the Today Show this morning, Speaks said his honesty is now being appreciated. I do think that a lot of people, after the, 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 the sound and fury here of the last few days, are coming around to thinking, well, give him credit for being honest about something. Speaks also resigned last week from his position of being Merrill Lynch's head spokesman. It's 58 degrees in Boston. The weather from Bill Corbell this afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds, windy and warmer, highs in the low to mid-60s. Tonight, partly cloudy, windy and chilly with lows in the mid-30s. Tomorrow, partly sunny, windy. It'll be 50 to 55 degrees. Saturday, increasing clouds in the morning. Rain in the afternoon, continuing into Saturday night. Highs Saturday in the mid-50s. Right now, it's 58 degrees in Boston. That's the latest from the WMJX Newsroom. I'm Steve Brown. Thanks, Steve. It's possible. There was no call from the governor. The condemned building had just faced its last sunrise, and the witnesses had gathered. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Get By now, you've probably seen pictures of the Travelers Building crumbling to the ground. But for the thousands of people who made it to Boston's financial district yesterday morning, it was a sight they'll never forget. Oh, great. I don't see a broken window around here. It was awesome. Awesome. It all collapsed in one. It all just came down the top and then hit the bottom. Incredible. In two and a half years, there will be a completed office tower complex where the Travelers Building once stood. Travelers Building might be forgotten, but the blast that brought it crashing to the ground will be remembered for a long time to come. 
Steve Brown, WMJX News. Rod, none of the candidates are leaving New York with that big prize, that being the endorsement of Governor Mario Cuomo. WMJX News, first with the information that counts. Governor Michael Dukakis woos the endorsement of New York's Governor Mario Cuomo in a debate in New York City. WMJX, the only Boston radio station to report on the debate live. With this live report from New York City, Steve Brown, WMJX News. WMJX, proving every hour that you don't have to listen to any other radio station for your news. Austin's 106.1.